world trip this spring, early spring, I think it's early. No, fall. It's in the fall. I get them confused. As you can tell, we left from Spring Hill. Um, went down <coughs> around in Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, and came back. So, 10 days, I think it was. So it, it was a pretty good trip. Uh, the first place we stopped at was the Alabama Gold Camp. If you haven't heard of it, it's just a, a little old camp along a river in Alabama that uh, they, they get a lot of gold seekers go to. Next one. Uh, we actually rented a high banker. Uh, I mentioned the high banker last meeting and some people didn't know what they were. Uh, wish the pictures were a little better. What this is, is you, you dump your rocks in, or your dirt in here and it has water that filters it out and then there's like a sluice down here and it catches your gold as you go along and there's a big pile behind it and you just keep shoveling dirt into it and the water washes it and you keep shoveling dirt into it and when you get tired you clean it out and you see if you have any gold. That was a lot of fun for a couple hours. <laughs> I don't know if it would be a lot of fun all day, but it was a lot of fun for a couple hours. And this is what we got from it. Uh, if you can see little bitty specks of gold right here. Tammy has a speck of gold on her finger and another speck of gold. So we did get gold from the high banker. Um, not a whole lot. But it was a lot of fun. And if you get down there, I would definitely rent the high banker. It was $20, I think, for four hours, something like that. And then they had a little stream there that you could get gold out of, but what we found were a bunch of garnets. Go to the next one. They had just packed with these little garnet balls, and if you look over here, we have a big pile of them. This is a, a mica schist with garnets impregnated in it. And we found all kinds of those too. Big ones, small ones, I and mean, they came up to you know a pretty good size. We were trying to play like we had a saruka and you know do the, the shake and the bounce and the shake and the bounce and flip them, and you can see that's all garnet. So it had ball sizes, and then Tammy has a handful of them over here. So we probably picked up 30 or 40 of those in every scoop we did. So it was just loaded with those things. Uh, have not looked at them to see if we can do anything much with them yet. Nothing else, they'll get tumbled and be pretty red rocks. <laughs> then we went to the hog mine. This is in LaGrange, Georgia, uh, famous for its barrel. Uh, occasionally you'll get it to where it's aquamarine. Uh, they used to mine beryllium in World War II here. And they left all the piles around. And this is the mine. Uh, big pit is right in here. And you just dig through the tailing piles, the old tailing piles. Or you can actually go in the dig, go in the pit and dig on the wall if you want to. Majority of the time, the people were just going through the tailing pile. They did find a copperhead in one of the, the piles. We didn't get to see it, but someone found one. <coughs> There's Tammy digging. Um, can't really see it very well here, but this is one of those little garden rakes, the little three pronged rakes that you use in your garden. Work great for going through the tailings. We brought shovels, we brought picks, we brought, you know, it's the only thing we used at this place. Just a little rake to go through all of the tailing piles. They had a place where you could clean everything up. Uh, some water so you can wash it. Some of the stuff we found. Uh, a lot of rose quartz. Uh, some regular quartz. Uh, a few pretty rocks. I don't think we found any barrel. Uh, we certainly didn't find any aqua green. We did get a lot of real pretty rose quartz out of it. 
There's some of them. All right. Next on the trip was Dahlonega, Georgia. This is north of Atlanta. Uh, this was actually the site of the first United States um, gold rush. It was in Georgia. Uh, this funky little place, the picture on the right is actually where we stayed. You uh, sleep upstairs. All right. Went to three places while we were there. The first one was uh, Consolidated Gold Mines. Has a really cool tour. If you ever down there, the tour is well worth taking. This was a, a working mine in the late 1800s. Um, very deep, very hard rock. Uh, we went, what did they say, 300 feet down. So it was a pretty good sized mine. Uh, these are just displays, <laughs> but those would have been boxes of dynamite. Um, everything had to be blasted. It's a really for all ages, a very interesting tour. Uh, they take you down about halfway and turn the lights off. And if you've ever been in a cave, you don't get any blacker than a cave when they turn the lights off. Uh, you can't see anything, and you really don't want to stand up because you hit your head on rock when you do that. <laughs> okay. Crescent Gold Mine, Crescent Gold Mine. Is that, is that gold in ports? Or it is. Yeah, and they have to bust it up and out of the ports. Uh, Crisan is also <coughs> there in Dahlonega. Uh, we rented a gold cube. If you haven't seen a gold cube, this is what one looks like. Um, it has water running through it. You just feed the... It has to be pretty small dirt. This was actually sand in the top, and it filters down, filters down through each one of these layers, and each one of these has mats in it, so it will catch all of the gold as it goes through. Uh, we got a, a tractor dump, so they just took one of the small tractors and a bucket scoop and put it on a tarp for us. Took uh, about two and a half hours to run through the gold cube with it. Um, but this is all gold. So we found a pretty good chunk of gold there. This is one of the this is one of the old pieces of equipment they had out there. Uh, you would actually fill the, the dirt up here and it would spiral down and collect the gold that way. Okay. And they had gems. Uh, these were buckets. You would buy buckets and wash them. Uh, that's what we like to do. So I like to do, Tammy likes to dig in the dirt. I like to do the buckets. Okay. This was the third one around Dahlonega. It's called Golden Jim's Grubbin. Um, if you ever watch um, on YouTube, there's a doc, doc with Gold Hog. Um, he sells a lot of gold mining equipment, and he is always up at Golden Jim's um, when he's doing his YouTube stuff. We were able to get our little stream sluice out right here. Uh, the first time we used it and realized about 10 minutes after we started that you have to classify everything down really, really small or it won't go through the stream sluice. And it's a real pain in the butt. And when you put classifiers in the river, put a rock or something in them? Yeah, we actually lost um, two gold pans. <laughs> they okay. just floated away and we couldn't find them. <laughs> and this was Franklin, North Carolina was our last stop. Um, Franklin is known for its buckets. Um, you can do a little bit of digging there, but the majority of it is bucket. Cherokee Ruby Mine. Uh, I brought this around last time. This was a sapphire that I found. Here. Um, and this is what it ended up looking like when I faceted it. So, a little disappointing, but hey, you never know. It's still cool. It's still cool. <laughs> Mason Sapphire Mine is another one that's been there forever. Um, this one you, you dig out of a pile that is brought in by uh, some heavy equipment. So you, you are filling your own buckets and then you're bringing them back to wash them. Uh, and these are a couple of the sapphires after I cut them that we got from there. Uh, not real clear things like you would see at a jewelry store, but still neat in their own right. 
and Mason Mountain and Koei Gift Shop, which is actually our favorite one down there. Um, Tammy found this eight carat Rotolite in their dig pile. Um, was didn't really expect it. We were actually sitting there talking about how they didn't get any big Rotolites anymore, and then she pops up and says, "Well, how about this?" And there's yeah, there's the Smokies behind us.